Hello, everybody. We are back with another visual pattern challenge. So here's our pattern for today. Uh, there's step one. We've got a bunch of goldfish. Step two, quite a few more goldfish. Step three, it looks like even more goldfish. And your challenge would be to look at this pattern and see if you can determine how many goldfish there would be in step number four. And if you can do that, how many in step 43? And along the way, could you write an equation that could be used to express the number of goldfish in any step of the pattern at all. If you'd like to accept that challenge, pause the video, give it a try. All right, so the first thing I noticed just looking at this pattern is that it seems to get bigger pretty quickly. So we've got five here and then here, we're up to 10 already. So it doubled in that uh, between steps one and two and here did it double again? Let's see, 15, 16, 17. So it hasn't quite doubled again. Hmm. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. At first glance, uh, a, an equation doesn't pop out at me. Um, let's look at how this is structured visually. What I'm noticing is that these two guys kind of stay constant in every step. So whatever else is going on in the middle, these two uh, guys are on the end. So then if I look at what's left, I've got one row, two rows, three rows. So I'm thinking in step four, we'd have four rows and then the two guys at the top and bottom. And then the rows themselves, we have rows of three and then four and then five. So I would assume these would be rows of six following that pattern. So we'd have four rows of six, that's 24 plus one more and one more. So that should be 26 in step four. That's my prediction for step four, just visually. But let's take a minute to analyze the numbers and see what's really going on here. So I'm gonna make a chart with the step number and the number of fish in each step. So in step one, we've got five. Step two is 10. Step three, yeah, that is 17. Oops, let's make that 10 a little clearer. 17 and in step four we're saying 26. When we list out our our numbers for each step then we like to take the differences. So I'm going to subtract 10 minus 5 is 5, 17 minus 10 is 7, 26 minus 17 is 9, and when we don't get the same number, we don't get a constant for the differences, it means it's not a linear pattern. And so what we do is we take the difference of the differences, and this is a way to check if it's a quadratic. Seven minus five is two, nine minus seven is two, aha. When you get a constant, in this case a two, in the difference of the differences, you know it's a quadratic. And we've run into this, if you've been watching the other videos, we've run into this several times, and I've never really explained why that's the case. Why, why does this go up by two? And is this true for any quadratic or would this number be different sometimes? Well, I wanna take a minute to just look at sort of the geometry of squares. So this is a way to represent the square numbers. This is one squared, this is two squared, this is three squared, this is four squared. To go from one squared to two squared, what I do is I add sort of around the right and the bottom edges, right? So that makes the next square up. And that's the pattern we're gonna repeat. When I go from one to two, I had to add three. Now, here's our two, I'm gonna add around the right and the bottom. And this time, well, I had to add five. And if I go up to the next square, I've, here's the three by three, I'm gonna add around the right and the bottom. And that is seven. And you can see I have to add two more than the previous step every time. So that that is true for just plain old x squared. So, so this is one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, so that's x squared. If I had two x squared in my equation, it, we, this number would just be doubled. So if you saw a four here as a constant in the difference of the differences, you would know it would be a two x squared. If you saw a six, it'd be three x squared. If, if you saw a one here, it'd be one half x squared. So this number, if you get a constant in the difference of the differences, you know it's a quadratic, but you also know the coefficient of the quadratic. And that can be a really great place to start in figuring out the rest of the formula. So let's, let's turn back to this particular pattern and see if we can figure out the rest of the formula. Now, one thing I like to do, I've got an x squared. I know the coefficient is gonna be one because I've got a two here. 
um, I just like to block off a one squared and then see what else is left. So let's do that in each one. And there's a three by three. Okay. So when I did it that way, what's left? I'm going to not look at one to start because um, that one is difficult because one squared is one, which is also the step number, but also might be a plus one. So it gets confusing what that is. If I look at step two, here's my two squared. And then I've got these two chunks that are two, um, two long columns. So it's like two of the step number. So this might be x squared plus 2x. That would be these chunks. And then these two are just always on every step. So that's a plus 2 to add those two at the end. So that's my thinking. Let's see if this plays out in step 3. So here's the, the 3 squared. Aha, here's two chunks of 3. So that would be our 2x, these two columns of 3 plus the 2. So I think that is our, our equation for this one. So I'm saying the equation is y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. Let's actually make sure it, it, it matches with the numbers. So in step 3, that would be 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 2. That would be 9 plus 6. That's 15, 16, 17. And yes, we have 17 in step 3. In step 2, it'd be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 2. So that's 4 plus 4, 8, 9, 10. We do have 10. In step 1, that'd be 1 squared plus 1 times 1 plus 2. That'd be 1, 2. Let's see. Did I make a mistake? Oh, no. 2 times 1. Uh -huh. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 2. That'd be 1 plus 2 plus 2. That's 5. So we can see that this equation works. The key to getting there, and this is kind of a, a complex equation, was to, to know what my x squared term was going to be, what the coefficient was, and then block that off and see what's left. All right. Now, getting to step number 43 should be pretty easy now that we have this equation. All we need to do is plug in step 43 into that equation. So let's see how to do that. So y equals 43 squared plus 2 times 43 plus 2. So 43 squared, let me, 1,849 plus 2 times 43 is, well, that's 86, and plus 2. So 1,849 plus 88, and we'll get a 7 there, and that's 13 and 9. So I'm getting 1,937. You might want to double check my numbers. What did you get? Did you get 26 for that um, next step? Did you get this for an equation? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.